I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 313, Count a Distinct. This is a function that was new to Quantrix in 2020, the distinct function. This is something that I suggested to the developers back at Quantrix Seminar Dimensions Conference last fall that they needed to develop in Quantrix. And I'm thankful that the developers and the product team there in Quantrix was able to get this into a release here in 2020. And I absolutely love it. And I used it today and I thought it was brilliant. And I wanted to share it with you. I have here a list of part codes. I have buyers associated with those part codes, and then I have a warehouse. Uh, and then with that, I have also the buyers listed that are associated with these uh, buyer codes, if you will. And if you look through this list, I have part 327 that has one buyer associated with it across all the facilities. But if I were to go to 323, this part code right here, you would see that actually I have a buyer two and a buyer one associated with it for these various facilities. And what I want to do is I want to bubble this part code up to the top because really it has more than one buyer. And so I want to, I want to identify that it has more than one buyer. I want the end user to be able to see that. So what I did is I used the count a distinct function in Quantrix. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new matrix C and drag it over here. Uh, or drag this one over there. And I'm going to drag part code to it. I'm going to delete category S and I'm simply going to say P1 is equal to count a distinct. And what are the distinct lists that I want to bring in? I want to bring in buyer, like so. And if I go ahead and do that, and then I sort this descending, I would see that indeed 323 has two distinct buyers. If I were to look at 321, it's not in this list because it only has one buyer. So what is the distinct function going out and doing here? Uh, you can see that in this case, in 323, it's going out and looking at a list of items and it's making them distinct and it brings in a blank which would register as nothing in account of function, but then buyer two and buyer three would register. And the reason this can work so well, again, is because I have link categories between my part codes across these matrices, and Quantrix therefore handles the lookup for me, uh, generally automatically uh, along the part code category. And I just really like this distinct function. I've, I've employed it a few other times. And I think it's fantastic that uh, Quantrix is always trying to improve their product and make it better. And I applaud them for it. And if you have any questions about Quantrix, I really hope that you'll reach out to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com and let me know of your question. I really, really want to make you a Quantrix master. I really want you to understand the power and the beauty of this tool because it makes my day every day that I get to use it. And I hope that you will join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.